Joining us now from Big 12 country in the heart of Lawrence, Kansas, is Professor Nate Mickle. Doctor. Doctor Nate Mickle. I apologize. Nate, what's welcome up, to Nate? B Dog? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Guys, I, I, I think this is my first appearance, and I just couldn't be happier. <laughs> Love to connect with you guys again. It's been so long. You know, we used to hang out together so much. We used to go to all these games together and see each other all the time, and, and it, it's been a little while, so it's so great to be back with you guys. How dare you want to progress in life and uh, get that doctorate and make money? Let's walk through what you've done since uh, you, you thought that life had more than sideline reporting on the radio. Uh, let's see, you went to Stanford and went to law school, and you got, your, you got a degree there, law degree, right? Yeah, I got a JD at Stanford, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, basically, I just I don't like to work. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So <laughs> go to I go school. to school, I go to Stanford. I realize I just want to stay in school forever. Uh -huh. uh, so then I did the Ph.D. Uh, at a, a school uh, up, um, at a school that's for a few years. Course. Yep. <laughs> and then hey, uh, Lavelle got a doctorate in Utah that. as well, Nate. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> so, OK. So, yeah, I got that there. And then uh, I really, you know, I'm loving school some more. So I, I decided to go to Notre Dame for three years at a postdoc <laughs> there. And uh, I I got this tenure track job at Kansas when I was like 40. So basically I, I postponed uh, entering the workforce until 40. So, you know, <laughs> if nothing else happens in my life, I feel like I kind of won in terms of uh, avoiding work. Hey, you're getting your student loans paid off, right? Uh, conversation for us, <laughs> conversation for another and day. And now you work in Kansas, right? What are you, what are you doing in Kansas? Yeah, so uh, at Kansas, I teach leadership and ethics. I spend a lot of my time doing research on social psychology as it relates to organizations. Uh, but yeah, teaching leadership and ethics in the business school. Business ethics, as they as they say on, uh, was it Billy Madison? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played. You got a great podcast going as well. Mickles That's why I got Dines. the mic. He's legit. Yeah, you, you, you're all set up. Uh, but we do, we brought you on for a very specific reason, Nate, because of your successes with BYU football against Wyoming specifically. And a punt return that I still think was a touchdown, was Nate. Touchdown. I think it, it was, was a touchdown. touchdown. And it, I, it's feel like six. BYU's had this hex. They can't have a punt return for a touchdown. And it feels like forever. <laughs> was it a touchdown? Walk us through that play in 2006. Did you get into the end zone? Yeah, so it, you know, it's, it, it's so funny because um, I actually talked to the ref a few years later about that play. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like, like any good ref, he dug in his heels and, and told me, <laughs> Uh, why I was wrong. But anyway, so what happened is, and, and I don't know, you know, you, you said punt return and, and I was the punt returner, but I did return like three kicks. And so this actually was a kick return. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, just, kick return. Okay. For people who, you know, really want to get into details. But what was interesting about this play is we had scouted Wyoming and we, we knew they were going to do this little, or they like to do this little short kick to the right. Most people kick deep to the left, right? But we knew they liked to do this little short kick to the right. And it, it's the opening kickoff. If we win this game, we're going to be conference champs, at least have a share. So that's a big game. And Wyoming has the top defense in the conference. So right before they're about to kick, I move up to that spot where I know they're going to kick it or where we'd scouted that they were going to kick it to tell them like, hey, guys, I know what you're doing. And then I'm like, you idiot. If I do that, maybe they'll kick it to the left and I want the ball. So because because frequently like Curtis would be the return guy on the right. So it's like, I'm going to back up and pretend like I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know if it would have made a difference. But anyway, I back up. As soon as they kick, I run up. And, and sure enough, they kick it there. Uh, I run down the left sideline. And, you know, I know my strengths. And I was always quick. Top end speed was not a strength. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm going down the sideline. I, I see the end zone. I think I'm going to get there. I switch the ball to my right hand. I dive. I hit the pylon with the ball. My left hand's extended to the left. I hit my head and my legs come over my back. And like, I really tweak my back. And I, and I think I give myself a little bit of a minor concussion, but I'd scored. I knew I hit the pylon. And so I go over to the sideline, you know, we scored on the opening kick, great start to the game. And I'm a little bit woozy. And when I come kind of get my senses and look out there, we, we got the ball on the one yard line. I start asking around, like, what's going on? How do we get the ball back? And they're like, oh, they didn't they blew you out of bounds. It's like, what? My one, you know, my, my <laughs> shining moment where I thought I scored. So anyway, I saw the ref a few years later when I was doing broadcasting and I was like, yeah, you know, we were playing in Wyoming and he's like, oh, I worked that game. And I was like, oh, I, I have, I got a beef with one of the rest there. He's like, that was me. You touched your hand out when you dove. And I said, no, I didn't. I got that feeling. He's like, no, you, you did. You did. <laughs> and thanks to the mountain cameras, or maybe it was versus, we had some real high quality SD, yeah. 480p footage yep. so that we could clearly <laughs> see whether we, you were in or not.
<sighs> no, but that game, BYU wins 55-7. You guys win the Mountain West. And, uh, hey, Utah was Against that. the top defense in the conference, I had forgotten that That's fact. pretty good. Okay, so now BYU renews uh, the rivalry with Wyoming. And, Nate, this might be the last game BYU plays with Wyoming ever or in a long time because I don't think BYU is going to return the game in 2024. They already have Nevada at home. So BYU and Wyoming coming up Saturday. What do you think of what you've seen from BYU so far this year? And what's it like to play against Wyoming? Yeah, well, let me go to that first. Let me go to your second question first. And thankfully, this game is in Provo because, uh, man, going to <laughs> Wyoming, it's so hard to play there. It's hard to get there. Uh, when we flew in, we got hit by lightning. We asked the – it was the scariest I've ever – scariest moment I've ever had on a plane. And we asked the stewardess after, you know, did we get hit by lightning? She's like, uh, no, you didn't. But, yeah, you did. <laughs> and, that uh, you know, it's like 70 70- – Whoa. Sorry, what? Was that 05? Uh, 05, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was, it was touch and go. We were scared. And, uh, you know, 75 mile per hour winds, 7,000 feet elevation. Like, you're getting close to that, like, altitude sickness level. Uh, you know, we, we, we beat them, of course, while we were there. Uh, so, yeah, at least this one's in Provo. Uh, you know, when we played them, they were just gritty and tough. And they had one of the best wide receivers, Javon Bonite. Uh, finished like top 20 all time in the NCAA for receptions and yards. And uh, he, I think he coached at Utah state. He's still a coach right now. Um, I, you know, I, I think BYU is, is uh, ready to win this game. It, it's easy. You know, you watch that Oregon game and uh, it, it's easy, you, you know, it's, it's easy or maybe we're prone to give into the temptation of like, Oh, the sky is falling. We lost big to Oregon, but look, BYU's offense. If, if you would have before the game said, here's Jaron Hall's stat line, and, uh, you know, how do you feel about the game? You'd say, yeah, good. So, look, Oregon had a great offensive game plan. We struggled to stop them. But I'm really looking forward to the game this week, and I think BYU establishes a run, and they, they have a good game and get the win. Nate, you have moved further east on the plains of the Midwest to now Lawrence, Kansas. You are in the heart of Big 12 country. BYU is headed there next year as a, an official member of the Big 12. What do the Cougars have to look forward to in Lawrence, Kansas, competing in football and basketball and the other sports? Yeah, so I went to a football game last year at KU, and they played Texas Tech uh, and just got destroyed, like, you know, 60 to 10 or whatever, and nobody's in the stands. And I'm like, oh, these poor KU fans, they don't know what it's like to have a good football program. Of course, I've been at BYU where we got awesome fans. They spent three years at Notre Dame. Uh, And then I go to a KU basketball game at Allen Fieldhouse a few months later, and it's like, oh, man, these fans, they really know what it's like to have a great team. Uh, so now this year, they, they got the new coach, Leopold, who's doing a good job. He's uh, 3-0. They're, they're, uh, they're favored for the first time in like 10, 15 years against P5 Wild. team. So, Wild. <laughs> BYU, you know, if, if, if KU football keep this up, then BYU is going to have a, a tough game that they, they should still win next year. Allen Fieldhouse, though, let me tell you guys, like, I just can't wait for the BYU basketball team to be playing in Allen Fieldhouse. Yeah. You look at the rafters and you see the players. And and, and this is, I'm I'm sad or embarrassed to admit this, um, and, and maybe I can blame it on KU marketing uh, for not making me know this, but basketball was essentially invented, well, I, I don't know, there may be debates about where it's invented, but Guess who KU basketball's first head coach was? Was it James Naismith? Dr. James It Naismith. was James Naismith, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I did not know that. And I'm a basketball fan. Now, you know, maybe the true basketball fans are saying, like, you're an idiot, Nate, of course. But, <laughs> look, I didn't know that. He was their first coach. And the next coach, uh, Fog Allen, that's who they named the arena after. Yeah. So, you know, if it were me, I would probably call it Naismith Arena. Uh, regardless, Fog was an awesome coach. But, anyway, you look up to the rafters and, and you see the players that – Uh, have their jerseys retired, and then you have somebody like, uh, you know, they have a a number one draft choice uh, guy named Andrew Wiggins, and I don't think his his jersey's not even in the rafters because he didn't hit the bar necessary for that. All that said, BYU's going to compete. They're going to, you know, BYU's going to win some games here is my expectation, the way they win at Gonzaga and beat Gonzaga. So I, I just can't wait for the BYU teams and the fans and the media members to come out to our new home here in Lawrence, Kansas. It's going to be awesome, man. And uh, in football, it's going to be fun uh, because BYU finally has that P5 schedule that they've been trying to schedule in independence, and this year's certainly challenging, but it's different when it's nine P5s in 10 weeks, right? 
plus one in non-conference. So how do you think BYU is going to compete in the Big 12 in the next five, ten years? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're going to be in the top half, and I think they'll have a chance to compete for conference championships in all the sports. You look what they did last year in the Pac-5, uh, 5 and 0 oh, in <laughs> Pac-5. <laughs> may, may as well be. It might be that. No, no, no. We should, <laughs> call, it exactly. we should call it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a it's going to be if it isn't already. Uh, so yeah, they go five and zero in the pack, whatever it is uh, last year. And you know, I think the Midwest is a great fit for BYU. I'm excited for a number of reasons too, because geographically it's a great fit, culturally it's a great fit. Uh, it's easy to get to. Well, it's, I, I say it's easy to get to Lawrence. It's two-hour flight to KC. Getting into some of these other schools in wintertime, you know, for Greg Rubel. Uh, is going to be a little bit tougher than, of course, going to the WCC. But look, BYU is a premier sport, sports program in the country, and they're going to compete and do well, and I think they're going to really thrive. And it's only going to help recruiting being in the Big 12. So, yeah, I couldn't be more excited for the team and for Kalani and for Tom and Admin and what they've been able to accomplish by getting into the Big 12. Nate, I, I have a favor to ask. On your upcoming podcast, uh, Mickles and Dimes, I need you to talk about the mentality of what it takes to be a great kick returner and punt returner. Because I feel like it's a lost art in college football, and even through all ranks of football. It just, it just when you're when you have a great returner, it is such a weapon. So you did some great things. Perhaps you can talk about. <laughs> that. I'm, I'm asking, I'm requesting that that is discussed at some point on Mickles and Dimes. Well, I will say that. I, so I interviewed Ted Robinson, the Emmy award-winning broadcaster who does the Olympics and NBA and NFL Niners, and Major yep. League Baseball. And uh, he he said, you know, he has this mantra of fearless, not reckless. And I was like, wow. That's one thing that every good punt return slash kick return needs. You got to be fearless. You can't be reckless. Uh, but I could go into some more detail. I like it. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for new topics and I do some interviews and monologues. So that, that I can work that into a monologue for sure. I love okay. that. Uh, that's something I want to pass on to my kids. You know, what does it take to thrive under pressure, especially as a punt returner? Where can people find the podcast and uh, listen to some great content? I, I, in fact, I really enjoyed your conversation with Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. Brother Moore. Brother Moore, yes, Brother Moore, the OC for the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, so it, it's called Mickles and Dimes. Credit to uh, Ben Criddle, who uh, called me that, you know, 15 years ago, and I like it. So <laughs> the idea is just, uh, you know, quick five, 10 minute, uh, simple life lessons that I've learned, typically research backed. Uh, that I want my kids to know. And then lately I've started just interviewing people who I think are interesting and have something cool to say that I also want my kids to learn. So yeah, if you Google Mickles and Dimes, uh, I've got a website that'll be live here in like a month. It's not live yet. It'll natemickle.com or micklesanddimes.com. But yeah, Google it. You'll find it on Apple, on Spotify, on uh, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, whatever uh, podcast player you like. Nate, great to talk with you. Uh, I'm sorry it took us this long to do it. I I'm assuming we'll do it again very soon. So I have a request because okay. I went to Notre Dame and I had season tickets in Notre Dame. I know a fair amount about Notre Dame football uh -huh. and I'm really excited to watch BYU beat Notre Dame in on October 8th. I will be there at the stadium, but before, before I go to the game, I'd love to chat with you guys about that game and give you the scouting report. Yes, please. For this Notre Dame uh, football game. Our producer, Ben Bagley, is writing it down right now. He's scrambling to find a pen <laughs> right now. <laughs> Call Nate during Notre Call Dame Nate. week. <laughs> oh, great stuff. Nate, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll talk to you again during Notre Dame week. Awesome. Can't wait. We'll make it a regular, uh, regular thing for us, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Nate.